to be ended. And that was from Psalms 34. Psalms 34, verse 12. Who is the man who desires life? Who is the man who desires life? How many of you desire life? Amen. There are a few of us here who desires life. Church, you know, many times we consider the life we have today in this world as a life which God has given. More so with the things what we find in the world. If I have the latest gadgets, if I have the latest technology, the latest car, the latest computer, the latest laptop, then it's cool and that is life. That's how we all consider it. We all think that life is based on what maximum I can have it for me to enjoy. That's what today most of us are in search of. We want to earn more and more so that we can satisfy the things what we crave for. Assuming that this is going to bring us into that place where we can enjoy life. We are in search of all the things, people, assets and all those things. What we think that we can get it and have a happy life. Yet, after attaining all this, we realize, we realize that there are people who does not have that life. There are many today in the world who has got all this, but ends up committing a suicide because they say that they are empty. They don't have life. They're empty. Church, when we chase after those things, what we assume that these things will bring life in us, let me tell you, nothing in this world can give you life. Nothing in this world can give you life. If there is anything in this world that can give you life, it is from God. It is from God. And in Genesis we read, if you turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Amen. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. You know, God, he created all the animals. But he did not breathe into them life. Animals were created. Animals were all with life. But not God's life. But you and me, when God created Adam, what the Bible says is, he, what did he do? He just blew into them his life. The breath of life. Church, if you see that Adam enjoyed that life, life comes from God and if you and me have to really enjoy, it is God's life only which we can enjoy. Adam and Eve both had a wonderful fellowship in the garden. They enjoyed the life. Yet, we all heard it a couple of weeks back. When sin entered them, death entered. And what was that death? They lost God's life. The breath of life which God gave them, they lost it. When sin enters us, what we lose is the life which God has given to us. Now, Adam was God's creation. God gave them the breath of his life and God created Adam and Eve in his own likeness in his own image 
But once Adam lost that life, everything what came out of Adam and Adam's generation has Adam's life. Genesis chapter 5. If you turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 5, I think it's verse 3. Or verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. Now, Adam got a son after his own likeness and his own image. The son of Adam was not in the likeness of God, but the son of Adam was in the likeness of Adam. Now Adam has a problem. He doesn't have anymore the life of God. He doesn't have the life of God. So his generation did not have the life of God. You and me are part of his generation down the line. Our great, great, great grandfather, Adam, lost that God's life. And now, today, what we have is Adam's life. What is Adam's life, you know? Adam's life is a life where knowledge reigned. Deception was the rule of the game. Deception was the rule of the game. Satan deceived Eve. Adam disobeyed. And finally, that became the rule of the game. And we all today live in that. We all want to make our life by hook or crook. Because it's all about what we can get it. What I can have it. This I like it. This can bring life. Let me get hold of it. So we rule over the things what we want to have life from. Now, Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 10 that I have come to give you life, life abundantly. And we don't understand what this life is all about because we have never tasted it. See, until unless I get the grip of what that life is, I won't go after that life. What I don't understand, I will never go after it. Now Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life abundantly. All my thinking about the life is what I am leading now today. More of what I need. More of what I can get it in my life. I want more pleasure, more things of the world, more money, more, 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 more for what all I have been craving for. I need more of that. And the Lord said, I have come to give you life, which means all this I will get it. This is the understanding we have. And this is where we fail. Jesus did not say that I have come to give you life, means the life which you are today leading. The life which you are living, that is not the life he came to give you. That life which Jesus said, has God's breath in it. It's the breath of God. And breath of God can only come when He dwells in me. When He is in me, He is not about the rules what He gave, not about the regulations you follow, not about the things what you chase and you think that I can now have life. Not at all. In John, John chapter 14, Verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way we understand, the truth we'll understand, but the life, we're not able to grasp it. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Which means, if you need life, you need to have Jesus. Without Jesus, there is no life. Now why Jesus? John chapter 1 verse 14 says that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. 
the word john 1 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and word was god so god now became flesh as a man and dwelt amongst us to give us life now we all understand this from verse uh, 7 to 11 in chapter 14 John chapter 14 verse 7 to 11 he talks about he and the father being one he reveals this that me and my father is one it's amazing that you know Jesus always quoted God as his father because there was a relationship it's not about just the man in authority but there was a relationship and when he quoted that he said me and my father is one you know Jesus always desired that you and me will have this life we all know God is love God is light God is holy all this we know and wherever God is something he reveals himself that way right so if God is love and if he dwells in me my character should be love if he is holy my lifestyle should be holy if he he is the one who is in me will reveal who God is simple as that now if I say God is in me we have to have that kind of a characteristics many times we really do not understand this second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 says second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 but we have renounced the hidden things of shame not walking in craftlessness nor handling the word of God deceitfully see now we have renounced the hidden things of shame in the life we lead in this earth there are so many things which is hidden we hide it because we know it is shameful so we do it everything in a hidden manner because it is shameful and he says that we have renounced the hidden things of shame not walking in craftiness nor handling the word not handling the word of God deceitfully no, we have got many people who will pick the words from here and there to justify what they are doing. And he says that you don't use the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. You know, if we have the spirit of God, one of the primary things is that Am I doing anything hidden? Is there anything which is hidden in my life which I don't want people to know? A life which is with God, which has God's life, there's nothing hidden. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit, what did they do? They went into hiding moment we have disobedience moment we have that spirit where we deceive God's word or we deceive people and show out that oh we are good and nice people we have a hidden lifestyle when Adam and Eve hid the first thing God asked us where are you where are you? If you have my life, why are you hiding? Where are you? If I'm a child of God, the first thing he'll ask me is, where are you? Why are you hiding? Because deception entered me. I messed it up. Now I don't want to show myself to the Lord. Even today we do it. We honestly, we have to acknowledge that. We do it. And then we want to justify from the Bible. We pick words to justify it. Hey, the Bible says like this also. This also says like this also. 
Take your own conscience. What you do hidingly. Jesus said, I am the light. I am the life. However, we fallen people tend to choose darkness. What is darkness? Absence of light. What is death? Absence of life. God said to Adam and Eve, if you eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge, you shall die. It's not about the physical death. It was about the absence of God's life. The life which God has promised, you will lose it. Then you will live a life of reasoning. A life where you will start reasoning. This is good, this is not good. This is good, this is not good. Every time we live a life of reasoning, whether you choose good or bad, the end is same, that is death. God did not want us to live a life of reasoning. Yet today, we reason it out and live. We want to prove it that we are right. We want to make, make it thorough that, no, this is it. In God's life, there is no reasoning. Just walking with him. John chapter 6, verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit which gives us life. Jesus said to the people when he was there physically that I'm going to go and I'm going to give you a comforter who is going to be with you. He will always be with you. He will lead you to the truth. He will always lead you to the truth. That is, he was wanting to give you his spirit or the spirit of God. Now, that's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, the Bible says, Paul says like this. And, the yeah. and so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, the last Adam, that is Jesus Christ, became a life-giving spirit. Became a life-giving spirit. The first Adam lost his life and just became a living being. He lived in flesh. He fed himself. He fulfilled his needs. And he died. But the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. He came in flesh and then he gave us the spirit so that you and me can have that life. Church, we all desire to have this life. At least we long to. Because we have been reading in the Bible, we have been studying in the Bible, we have been meditating about this life quite a lot. Yet we are not knowing how to have this life. Yes, whenever his spirit enters in our life, the seed has been sown. The seed of that life is in us. But we who lived in our flesh don't allow the spirit of God to take over our life. We don't allow the spirit of God to take over our life. You know, everything which has got life, has two things. Has a function and has a purpose. Right? Any plant which has got life has a function and has a purpose. Any animal which has life has a function and has a purpose. Human being who has got life, otherwise he is dead. Physically dead. So if you are created, there is a function and a purpose. If a plant Say an apple tree, you planted an apple tree and expect an orange to come out, it will not happen. The function of the apple tree is to give apples. 
If you have a pet, a dog at home, and gives birth to a dog, it won't give birth to a cat, right? Because a dog can, the function of the dog is what? It will only reproduce dogs. Now, understand this. Dog's function is what? Not to be in your bedroom, but it will bark to the unknown, unfamiliar things. To guard you, to take care of you. That's the function of a dog. Function of a cat is, somebody yesterday said that, to <laughs> go after my milk. <laughs> no, function of the cat is to chase after the mice. You know, in Brooklyn Church, whenever you go there, there's a cat in the basement. I asked him why the cat is there, because there's a lot of mice. You know, everything what is created has a purpose. It has a function and a purpose. Which means, to occur something, there is a defined way which has to come to pass to take the place for which it is created for. These want life. So there has to be the way, a direction, how this has to come into my life. Yes. Through the Spirit of God, we get life. But does it have a direction? Romans chapter 8 verse 2 says, Romans chapter 8 verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life, the law of the Spirit of life, in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, has made me free has made me free from the law of sin and death from the law of sin and death no church right from the birth we are in the law of sin and death we are governed by this law only if you do this you will have this issue or if you break this law there is death the law governs us and when we break that law there is always a consequence of this law. That is how we have grown up. Everything what we do is governed by a law. But Paul says here, there is another law. And that is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. This law sets me free from the law which has always been raising me up right from my birth. This law is called the law of spirit of life. The law of spirit of life. See, what does law mean? Law means there is a clear direction through which when you go, there is an end result. That is what it means to have law. Now, this is the only place where Paul explicitly says this, law of spirit of life and law of spirit of life will always set you free from the law of sin and death not only that go to Romans chapter 8 verse 29 it says Romans chapter 8 verse 29 for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Amen. So the law of spirit of life not only sets you free, but it also conforms you to the image of his son, Lord Jesus Christ. We are now in the image of Adam, but this law, law of spirit of life, will conform me to the image of his son, Lord Jesus Christ. So two things this law does. One, it sets me free from the law of sin and death. Other, it conforms me to his image, to the last Adam, not to the first Adam. Till now I was conformed to the first Adam. First Adam is what? Deception, disobedience. The first Adam reflects and lives on two things, deception and disobedience. 
But now I am being conformed to his image. Whose image? The image of his son, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, church, many times deception and disobedience is a, a normal lifestyle for many Christians. Sad to say that. They say they are born again. They say they love Jesus. But lifestyle is disobedience and deception. They don't have the revelation. They are still bound in that law. And because you disobey and deceive, you are bound by your own actions, by your own lifestyle. There is no freedom. Now, when the Lord, when Paul says this, he makes things clear how this law can be effective in our life. Turn your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 onwards. 10 to 12. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. Amen. Paul brings this out. That he says that always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in my body. If the death of Jesus is revealed in my body, life of Jesus will come into my body too. Death of Jesus, say death of Jesus, when it's revealed in my body, life of Jesus will be revealed in my flesh. Now, what do you mean by death of Jesus? He's not asking for the scars of his death. Many times, death of Jesus means what we think, oh, like what Thomas said, under and unless I see the nail pierced hand, I will not believe. So this nail pierced hand should be in our lives. No. He's not asking that the death, the scars of his death be on you. He says that the death of Jesus has to be revealed in your body, in your bodily form or in your lifestyle. What do you mean by this? Seldom we understand. We just go on reading, just go on read pages of pages. There are people who will tell me, I have read 20 times this Bible. What they read, they don't know. No, what do you mean by death of Jesus to be revealed in your body? Why did Jesus die? Jesus died so that my sins are taken away. I will be made righteous in the presence of God. My sickness, my curse, everything is taken away on the cross. And I have a body which is now revealing his glory. What he has done on the cross is being revealed in me. Now how will this manifest? His death has to manifest. Let's go a little more deeper. Jesus or God, he loved us. He loved us so much that he was willing to give his son to die. Right? We, men, most of you who are here as parents, you have children. You love your children so much that you are willing to pay all the price so that your children are blessed, your children are comforted, your children have those things what you might not have had. Right? Many of us willing to pay any kind of sacrifice so that our children are blessed. Honestly, let me tell you, when we went through a hard time, when our son Johan was only five, uh, four years old, we went through a challenge. And many times my wife would say, what he is going through, wish it would have come on me. See, as a mother, 
she can't see the pain which the son is going through she would say let it have, if it would have happened to me it was okay why my son and you and me who are parents know this very well when our children go through the pain you are willing to pay any price why because you love them they are yours you love them so much that you are willing to pay any price right is there any parent here who doesn't want to pay any price for your children no one will be there in spite of what god says you know we evil parents want to still do good for our children even though we have an evil mindset when it comes to our children we have a great heart a loving heart a sacrificial heart so that my children will be blessed this is the heart of those who love this is the heart of those who love a truly a true love this is another kind of love which is in this world where you say you love but no sacrifice they will not make any sacrifice it's all about you love is basically you lust you lust the neighbor's property you lust the neighbor's wife you lust the other woman you lust so what happens is the lust is used as love because it wants to crave or want to satisfy the craving of yours and we say this is love the true love there is a sacrifice when jacob loved rachel the bible says laban said you have to slog this out you can't get this woman just like that work for me for 7 years after 7 years i'll give you my daughter this guy slogged it out but for him 7 years was few days that's what the bible says the first 7 years became very few days you know when there is love whatever be the sacrifice it doesn't hurt you it doesn't bring you any kind of pain or sorrow because behind that is a love which covers all what you are willing to suffer for jacob after 7 years of his slogging goes to his, the would be father and say hey give me your daughter now no 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 you have to work another 7 years he deceived he also got now the deception now next 7 years he worked still his heart for rachel did not diminish he again slogged it out for 7 more years 14 years gone again he went and asked for rachel he said no you have to work another 7 years still he did not stop the bible says he worked for 20 years before he got rachel a young man say for 25 years old he goes to get a bride he has to wait till 45 before he marries this girl can you imagine are you going to wait you won't wait if you don't love but if you truly love you are willing to wait if you lust somebody you won't wait gone doesn't matter there are other girls there i'll marry them because we didn't love them we lust after them jacob loved rachel he slogged he worked he said no i want to marry this girl then finally when all this thing was over in his life he gets his woman and he leaves church if you have love first and the foremost thing is that no how much ever you are willing to sacrifice you won't measure that sacrifice because the love is exceeding all that this was the reason of the death of jesus on the cross the death of jesus on the cross was because he loved you and me so much he loved you and me to that extent that he was willing to shed the last drop of blood 
No. This is name there. Now the thing is, he says that I am willing to give you this life if this death is revealed in your body. That is, you willing to love him. And for that, you are willing to pay any price. That's why Jesus gave his first commandment that love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and all your strength. If you love him, the life of his will be revealed in you because there is a price to love him because he has paid the price to love you. His death has to be revealed in me. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I can sing here thousand and one times. But if in my lifestyle, if in my body, his love is not revealed, I cannot experience his life. Which means, if night, 10 o'clock, some one brother calls me and says, Brother, I want you to come to my house. Lord, pray for me. Am I willing to make that sacrifice of my sleep and go and minister to him? Am I willing to go through that pain, go through that hardship, give up my sleep, give up my, all that comfort, give up my enjoyment, so that my fellow brother will be blessed? Because Paul says in the next portion, in verse 12 says, when death works in me, life works in you. Means, when I am going through that hardship of revealing the love of God to you, you are getting a life. Life will flow to you. Only when death of Christ is revealed in my bodily, then the love of Jesus, the life of Jesus will be for you. Missionaries traveled thousands of miles, giving up their family life, giving all their comforts from this country. Europe came to our country gave us the gospel so that you and me can have life. Death worked in them. Death worked in them. Sorry. The death of Jesus worked in them. Let me put it like that. They gave up all that. Suffered all that so that you and me can have life. What is the price we are willing to pay to reveal his death on my body? We all want life. No? How many of us really desire that life? No, this life is good now. Let me tell you the advantage of that life. There was no sickness in garden when Adam and Eve lived. There was no lack in that garden when Adam and Eve lived. There was no problem in that garden. They had the full authority over the earth. That was the authority which God gave to Adam and Eve. Today, we are unable to stand on even one authority to cast out the demon. Why? Because, you know, death of Jesus is not being revealed in me, in my body. It is so hard for us. Even when we try, we try with our strength because it's minus the love of Jesus. Many of us try. I am trying to be good. I am trying not to lose my temper. You know, every time I see my boss, I am filled with anger, but I have suppressed my anger because I am a Christian. I should be a good Christian now. So I suppress it. One day you suppress, second day you suppress, third day you burst out to your spouse at home because you can't suppress it anymore. That's what happens. If you try to suppress anything, what is coming out from your heart, it is going to burst out somewhere. Or you will, on the road, you will be cursing the driver who is in the front. The reason is not because of what he is doing, but because you have suppressed some things. And now you want to come out of that. It's only that love. That love 
which you have experienced from Christ, which you have experienced from God, will enable you to pay a price to reveal the life of Christ. Until unless I truly have experienced his love, I cannot give this love to someone. We can say verbally God loves you, but ask yourself, have you experienced God's love? Have you enjoyed, have you cherished God's love? If you have cherished God's love, if you have truly enjoyed his love, Paul said one thing, there are things in shame which you did, you will not do it again. Because you love him. I don't want to put him in shame anymore now. I don't want to lose his love. David messed up once, but he went into the presence of God and said, create in me a clean heart and restore a right spirit in me. Cast me not away your presence from me. He made it very clear in the presence of the Lord. Lord, cleanse my heart. Many times we have messed up. We have a hidden life. But if you truly want to have the life of God in you, come out of this hidden life. Ask Lord today, Lord, I want to experience your love. I don't want to lose that love from you. I want to be a man and a woman that the life of yours will be expressed in my body. There is a life which is hidden in my heart, which nobody knows. I long for some things which nobody knows. It's because I didn't enjoy the love of God. There is a life which is hidden in my closet. Only he knows it. I have not shared it with anyone. But because it is not his life, we are not able to walk in that life. This morning I want to encourage each one of you. If you have truly experienced God's love, and you are today very cold, you are no more having that kind of zeal, that passion, that you want to walk in his love, check your closet. Check that hidden place of your lifestyle. Something which has been messed up, which is stored, which you don't want to reveal it, is holding you back from enjoying his life. If you have truly experienced his love, one thing let me tell you, you will make any sacrifice to reveal that love of Christ. That love, if you pay a price in your bodily form, still you will know that the life of God is flowing from me to my fellow brother, to my fellow sister. This is the life God wants to give. That you become a channel where others around you experience life of God. Do you want to be that? Can we all stand up in His presence? Shukharavasi. the law of the spirit of life. This law is only one thing, that the death of Lord Jesus be revealed in your body, so that his life will be revealed in you. And his life will flow from you to others. The law of the spirit of life will always enable you to overcome or will set you free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death has bound all of us because we have lived in that life. But today the Lord is calling you out to enjoy His love. His love is amazing, pure, and only for you. He died only for you. He shed his blood only for you. 
and his spirit wants to abide in you so that you can have that life which comes from god that will set you free completely this morning if you have not enjoyed his love it's time for you to really come out of that closet that place where you're always hiding because deception and disobedience ruled over you examine your own lives let us see where are my hiding that i don't want to reveal myself to god let us come how many of you really know how great his love is you know when i stand in the presence to declare his love sometimes i'm not able to speak in words I'm overwhelmed of his love that i cry out to the lord i just don't know what to tell because that's the amazing love he has i just want to fall prostrate and say lord what am i that you have loved me so much because no man has loved me no person can love me this way what is it that am i worth that you can love me so much have you experienced truly that love of this if you have not check your own heart it's not about being perfect it's about being transparent to him it's just about being transparent to him that is all none of us are made to be perfect we are all human beings with all the shortcomings but lord your love is so much that lord i stand in your presence with awe how to fall prostrate and say lord what is it that i am worth that you love me so much Have you experienced that love? His love is so good. Let me tell you that. You know, our lust can chase the things of this world. But His love is so awesome that nothing in this world can satisfy you with that love. And the Lord is calling you to that place where you can experience his love just be transparent to him just willing to say lord i have so many things hidden in my closet but i come into your presence lord create in me a clean heart lord and restore a right spirit in me i want lord to enjoy your love this love to some that they will have life they will walk in that life that life which you have given me how many of you are willing to say but i want to experience this love lift your hands to the lord
God, here I am, Father. He's willing to just embrace you. He's not going to point a finger at you. You messed up like this. You messed up like that. You did this. You did that. No. Only human people do this. Only the people of this world will do. Your father and mother may do. Your siblings may do. Your friends may do. But your God will never do that. He's just willing to embrace you. That's the greatness of his love. Are you willing to just leave all that and come into his presence? Just to say, Lord, I want to come to that place where I can experience your love. If there's anyone in this place who want to embrace that love, come right in front of this altar. Right in front of this place. Leave your place. Doesn't matter what it is. You just want to embrace that love of Jesus. Just want to love, embrace that love of Jesus. It doesn't matter what is there in your life. Let, it doesn't matter what kind of problems was there. What kind of accusation is on you. All what you need is, Lord, I want to embrace that love of yours, Father. When you embrace that love, I'll tell you, the Lord is not going to question you. The Lord is not going to condemn you. The Lord is not going to point a finger at you.